mention the word GOAT in the context of Australian Survivor, it can mean many things. But on the scale of greatest of all time, our next inductee is easily in the conversation for that title. Across his two seasons, David Jennett played with a level of energy, strategy, tenacity and entertainment that has perhaps never been seen before across the 20-year history of the franchise in Australia. From the very first moment he appeared in our screens on season six in 2019, viewers knew they were in for something different with his screen presence and incredible gameplay captivating audiences around the world. And despite falling short on his first season, David was able to bring that same skill set to the table and more for All Stars a year later, where he battled his way to the very end and outwitted, outplayed and outlasted 23 of the most iconic Australian Survivor players of all time to be crowned the seventh winner of Survivor in Australia. David has played a total of 84 days on Survivor over his two seasons and easily can be considered one of the best who have ever worn a buff on the franchise in this part of the world. Now, it was his first year of eligibility this year in the Hall of Fame and David cruised his way into the Hall of Fame with both a dominant fan and expert panel vote solidifying his GOAT status and cementing a legacy that will probably never be matched. And now that I've made sure that his head is nice and big and ready for this chat, I am so honoured to be able to welcome <laughs> the golden god himself with me right now to accept uh, his induction. David, first of all, welcome and congratulations on your induction into the Hall of Fame. Ben, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. That was a great intro, my I, friend. You're welcome. I felt like you might have undersold me a little bit. Yeah, uh, well, I've got more. Like, do you, I mean, do you just want me to sit here for ten minutes and just you know read through everything here and just uh, yes, we we'll just yeah, yes, okay. I, I thought so. I, I absolutely <laughs> thought that's exactly uh, yeah. Golden God coming in hot. Yes. How are you doing, man? I am doing fantastic, Dave. How about yourself? And, and what does this mean for you? Like everything you've achieved, I guess, in your, in your life and then through Survivor, I mean, to be inducted into the Australian Survivor Hall of Fame. Oh, it's pretty epic. I think um, Survivor has been such a big part of my life that to get recognition like this, it's like little validation stuff that I just think is it's so cool, man. So I'm really honoured to be a part of it and I uh, appreciate everyone that – Voted and got me in there, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really yeah, I'm chuffed. What was Survivor something that you thought you'd ever be part of? I mean, was this something that you were a, a fan of before you initially ended up on the show? So I had watched the original American seasons, some of those really early American seasons, because that was kind of coming out as I'd moved to the states. Um, so I, I did. I watched I watched a bunch of those early ones. So it was on my radar, but it wasn't th something I thought, oh, I'm going to go play Survivor because I was in New York to model. And that was my focus being in the fashion business and all that kind of stuff. So it just really wasn't on the radar. I didn't really consider myself a survivalist either, where I thought those early seasons, I mean, they're boiling water. They're doing like really, I was like, that's not really, <laughs> you know, my jam. I was there to like, you know, take pictures and be pretty. <laughs> uh, so it wasn't on my radar and it was really only when Australian survivor kind of started happening. And I had a few of my friends, Sarah Talik was a contestant on, uh, on one of the seasons. And, and she, she was kind of talking about how good her experience was. And then I started thinking, you know, I'd, I'd been doing some acting for the last few years. I wanted some more time in Australia and it all just kind of like, yeah, it came down the pipe like that. Do you, do you remember that first day when you're on that beach in Fiji on your first season and, and what was going through your head when you're surrounded by oh, 23 man. other people, JLPs in front of you and your adventure's about to start? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, it's really hard to put into words, which I know something everyone says it's hard to put into words, but it's really true. It's just so overwhelming. Like your senses are just completely overwhelmed. You've got, I'd never seen that many cameras and I, I'd be, I've been working 20 years in entertainment. So I, you know, I'd never seen that many cameras in my life, like focused on us. And then, you know, you're kind of being marched a bit like military style into that opening scene and standing with the caliber of people you're standing with. Some of them you recognize, some of them you don't. You're kind of like, I, I know what's on the line because I knew they were doing a champions thing where I'm like, no one on this, they're not going to know who I am and I'm supposed to be like a celebrity. This is, so you're dealing with all those kind of feelings. So you're very unsure about what's happening you don't understand the game from a production perspective just yet either that first time. So it's just, it's completely overwhelming, but in that same sense, time slows down and those memories, like I have such vivid memories of what I was doing, who I was looking at, what I was analyzing. And it was, it's amazing. It's such a great 
great thing to be a part of on that first day because that's really what sets you up for like, oh, this this thing is huge. Like it really felt big as you were standing there. Outside of those elements and obviously having watched Survivor before, was there one thing that you went into expecting with the game that you completely didn't expect? So, you know, one element of the gameplay that maybe you didn't think about before you went in there and just completely changed on that first time you played? Yeah, I think there was heaps of things. Uh, I, I mean, specifically, you're just, you're just not prepared for the not eating, the filming scheduling, all that kind of stuff, and, and actually being in the elements. Like, I just think you can't really prepare for that. And when you're watching the show at home, I think for me, I'm kind of like, oh, how much of that is real? How much of that is produced? And and it was, you can you can guess what's happening, but until you're actually there and in it, you have no clue. Like, even if I tried to explain to you, oh, it'll be like this and that. And once you're there, you're just like, whoa, like this <laughs> is nuts. So I had, um, I'd watched, my, my strategy really going in was like, I, I was coming from a television perspective. Like I wanted to be a television character. And um, so I went back and I kind of started researching all the really popular American characters on the show, um, Boston Rob, Tyson, and watched their seasons and then started to try and figure out like, what do people like about those guys? What is it that that they like in those characters? Um, and so I was going into season four, kind of trying to act my way through it. I wasn't really thinking of it in terms of like a, a competition I could win. So I developed like my character in my head. I hadn't named him the golden God just yet, but I developed that character and how I wanted to come across on screen and how I wanted to portray it. And it just so happened that all the game kind of I got sucked into the game as I was out there. How fascinating. How did the Golden God then come about that moniker? Did that just hit you at one stage out there? <laughs> I, uh, so I'm a big fan of Always Sunny in Philadelphia and there's a character on there, Dennis, who um, is kind of like this narcissistic sociopath. And I I, I find comedians who who have like this rage in them but they're lovable, hilarious. Like I loved Chris Farley's shtick where he would go from zero to a hundred really yeah. fast. Dennis would go from a z like zero to a hundred really fast. And he has this kind of classic rant on, uh, on always sunny where he's been telling his friends how he's like um, the king of this school. And when they go to the high school reunion, he's completely delusional. He's not. So he gets like really mad about it. And he starts going on this thing of like, I'm the golden God. I was a God at this school. You can't be doing this to the golden God. And it was kind of a thing that he, that, you know, became a part of the show for him. Wow. And so I was doing, they'll pull you aside for little interviews. And it was just after I, um, I, I had had that, uh, I'd made crafted the idol and all those kind of things. And, and, and it was, I was just riffing because the guys will be like, Oh, you know, how are you feeling right now? And, one of the things I picked up from watching the show is I, I always found it really boring when people are like, Oh, I'm good. <laughs> and you know, you get those really great people on TV who just like kind of give you so much stuff to make you feel like you're there. And in that moment, I was like, what do I feel like right now? What do I feel like? And I had the character idea in my head and I was like, I feel like a golden God. I'm a golden God right now. I'm the golden God. And that's, they, that I could just, you know, sometimes when you're filming stuff, if you, when you hit, something that is going to be really great. The camera guys will be like, make a face or like, you're not really allowed to talk to them or something, or they'll be like, oh. you know, and you, you, you just know you've, you've hit something. You've hit it. You've hit the yeah, goal. Yeah. And then so, Fantastic. so I, I, I'd been throwing out heaps of like sound bites and it just happened that that one was the perfect timing. It was, it was, I was in the moment. I was actually feeling really elated. So it wasn't all acting. I was really high. Like, I was just like, this is the greatest thing. You know, what do I feel like? You know, I feel like the golden God. And then they started throwing it back to me in, um, in my IVs. So they pulled me out for an IV probably like a week or two later, someone in the production room was like, yo, we are onto something with this. <laughs> and then when That's I'd incredible. sit down for a, for a bit with an IV, they, the producer would be like, now, as the golden god, how do you feel? And I was like, oh, okay. I've, I've that worked. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I found what's working for him and then I just ran with it. So, that's amazing. and then, the, the, yeah, the character just keeps creating and creating. And 
as you have time on the island, there's so much time to think because you're in these kind of down spots. Like I was just constantly being like, how can I make this bigger? What would fans like to see? How do I do this? I want to be, I want to be a villain. I want to be exciting for the fans. And that was most of my planning in season four. It wasn't really, how can I win the game? Wow. In fact, I probably was doing stuff in season four that yeah, wasn't game winning stuff. I was more trying to play for fans and for people who were watching the show and I was like, if I'm watching the show, what would I like to see? Or what would be the craziest thing I could do with this? Or the craziest thing I could do in this scenario? And I always really liked, um, you know, and I, like Luke, for example, was so creative with what he'd done on other seasons. And sometimes I feel like, oh, he's just doing stuff for the sake of doing it. But it makes it interesting. Like the creativity is, is I think, what makes you a good survivor player. And then you end up with Luke and you have both of you yeah. basically <laughs> working this way. It's so <laughs> incredible yeah. to see that basically. Yeah. Which does that then when JLP snuffed your torch out on that season, do you get sort of a bit of hunger then that goes, okay, well, that was that time. If I ever get a chance to play again, I'll do it differently. And then when you do get to do it again, that you look at All-Stars completely differently. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, it didn't happen for me immediately because also there's a, a bit of time passes between when you play and when it's edited and then the audience's reaction. But when the torch was stuff, uh, snuffed, when the torch was stuffed, when the torch was snuffed, I was, I was just like buzzing, man. It was like this out of body experience. You're just like humming. And I had been thoroughly blindsided that mm-hmm. night. So power yeah. to him. Janine. <laughs> um, boost juice. Janine, Have you touched boost juice since? Or <laughs> Yeah, I love Janine. She's one of my favorites. She's an incredible survivor player too. Indeed. But she also, um, she always uh, also likes to give me crap because I was making a plan with Simon um, to get her b- booted out on the next vote, which I told her about. And then she was like, how could you possibly have been trying to get me booted out? And I was like, you <laughs> actually got me booted out. <laughs> wow. Um, but yeah, so they, they, they do the torch and you just, it's just, it's like, you can't take your, everything in. And then you're like walking down the path. And as you're getting away from the, um, the campfire, it's actually like, it gets really sad. Just like really heavy. You're like, Whoa, it's over. And like I said, because I'd been playing that kind of like television game, I wasn't thinking, Oh, I could win the money, but suddenly you're walking away and being like, uh, I, I was nine people away from like getting a major payday. And then the gears are turning. And as I was going down, I had to, you have to do, you have to rewalk that thing a couple of times so they can catch your feet. They can mm-hmm. catch your sad face and then they <laughs> weigh you and all that kind of stuff. So there are some t- TV elements to it. Um, and one of, uh, someone pulled me aside into a shipping container that they had set up there and was like, wow, fantastic game. We're so happy with what you did. Will you play again in six weeks? <laughs> Wow. And I was like, I was like what, what? Yeah, can I, does that mean I can go back in now? Can I go back in now? Let me back in. Because I really wanted to get back in the game. I had I had all these plans and things that I wanted to do that were just like, thump. so it's almost like, you know, there's like a death in the family or something. You've, you've got all these great things lined up and I had so many more plans for season four that I was going to do this and that and that and that. And then it's just like gone. And yeah. That's it. So you're really like, oh, it's like super deflating. So it was exciting to get that opportunity to go again. And I said, yes, sight unseen. Maybe if I had have had a bit more time. Once <laughs> <laughs> well, you've had really, the pizza but- and the beer and you're kind of in your bed again, you might all of a sudden be rethinking <laughs> yeah. that yeah. slightly, but you're, you're out yeah. there. Which can you then put into words what's that like the next season when your name's read out? You've, you've achieved everything, those all those extra things that you've mentioned there and, and JLP's calling you as a winner of Survivor? I mean, it was just that. So for me, that was the culmination of this year long journey. And uh, when I was doing the whole golden God thing, I wasn't quite sure how it would be perceived by the audience because they, they might've, and, and at the first, when the show first was airing, I was getting such a bad audience reaction. I was like, Oh my gosh, I've blown it. And I was like, are they going to see the light? Like, I, this is funny. It's not me. I'm doing the thing. It, it, you'll laugh eventually. And they did. Yeah. So then once I started getting that love, I was like, Oh my gosh. Cause it was some really like, Man, this, the backlash on social media at first was like really hardcore. Um, we were getting like like crazy messages and people saying stuff about my family and how narcissistic I was and I, all this kind of stuff. And I know it is reality TV, but again, like I, I had done that to try and entertain people and to know, oh no, I might have fallen flat here. It was really like hard, <laughs> I guess. I was yeah. like, oh no, I've like totally blowing it. And then it just started turning. Like as I kept getting through situations on season four, people were like, 
yo, actually, this is great. So they bought into it. I felt like there was a bit of an education for the Australian audience there where they were like, oh no, the gameplay side of things is the best part. The deviousness, like those showy things are what make it interesting. And then they were on side with me. So that was a small victory at the start. But like I said, I had this time now to go back and reflect and be like, oh, the character's created. I don't have to worry about that for all stars. I can actually play the game. I don't have to think about all this crazy stuff. And I still wanted to be big and I still wanted to play the golden God, but I could really focus on how to better improve relationships, how um, to like just make better moves, make moves that were smarter as opposed to showy with a bit of show, a bit of flash, still have those kind of like flashy elements that make me me, but also to do it in a better way that would help me win the game. And uh, so when JLP reads out that the soul survivor is, you just to like, it's elation, man. Like I, I, you know, other than my kids being born, I can't remember ever being that happy and just cloud nine. You really, I felt like I was floating and I'm just, it's just like so validating and yeah, it's, just, it's everything. It was really, really great. Outside of that moment, can you pinpoint one moment across your two seasons that you define as maybe the best moment of your time on Survivor? <laughs> uh, I mean... I I really loved playing season four. I felt like for me, season five was much harder. Um, My body wasn't ready for five. So I had great relationships. I came with great relationships from season five, but I I came away from season four with family. And um, with just the initial experience and the bonding was just uh, like so epic. And I think that first experience, you you can't ever get that back. Whereas you could play like 10 times and, and, you know, have good experiences, but that first one is really special. So for me again, and like I was saying with the TV game, um, Janine finding the, the uh, half idol clue or the clue that gave her an idol on the, um, on the opposite tribes thing, and then actually pulling off that idol switch with Sean was just like magic. Yeah. Cause I come up with these plans in my head and I'm like, oh, okay, best scenario, this is how it could go. I'm going to give this here. He's going to do that. I might get this, da, 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 da. Uh, and then that'll lead to this. And then you ha- I have all these contingencies. So I give him the idol and then he tells that person and then they come back to me and the da, 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 da. So I would have like 10 different scenarios I'd be running through my head, but you have your one scenario where you're like, this is what I want to happen. And I would like visualize it. I'd do it all in my head because I, I was, I'm big in the meditation thing. So I'd be on the beach and that's what I would be doing. I'd meditate on anything that was away from the Island for about, I don't know, five minutes, like family, just like life and love, blah, 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 <laughs> all that good stuff to get calm. And then I would be like fully visualizing all my moves for the day, the conversations I had, how I could make this happen. Um, and that was almost like my checklist. I wouldn't do anything in the morning before I had that time. So I'd take like 30 minutes to myself. So that moment of when Sean <laughs> gave me that freaking idol, dude. Oh, I was like the cat that caught the canary. It was great. Do you think he's going to um, do it again next season? Uh, like, do you think no, he's learned? Uh, that was that was uh, yeah, that was definitely an education for that young man. I t- <laughs> he's such a great dude. I, I, I'm like, yeah, what a douchebag I was. But I mean, I I love that, and I know it wasn't the smartest move, but in terms of moves for me being like, I want this character to be like big. And that was the one I was like, yeah, that's the creativity. That's that spark. Amazing. Um, amazing. It's I'll so- elaborate more too. So, I did, so in all stars, that same feeling happened when we got Daisy voted out. Me and yeah. Matt Rogers worked together because. And the facial so expression, many- David, the <laughs> facial expression. Come on, that meme that keeps on giving. <laughs> And there was so many moving parts, but to see that kind of actually happening and I was really scared of working with Matt. So I was like, he's going to, he is going to sell me out on this. I just didn't trust him, but I had to. And then for that to work and for Brooke to play the idol for me, I was just like, yeah, it was perfect scenario and and perfect gameplay. And it doesn't always work out like that. You know, you've got your perfect scenario. I would always have like my contingencies and, and those were two that just like, Spot incredible. On. Absolutely mm-hmm. incredible. Uh, I'm sure you get asked this question a lot, Dave, before we let you go. But, I mean, is this it for you for Survivor now? Can we expect to see you one day? Like, do you want to kind of go out there and try and become Australia's first ever two-time winner potentially one day if they uh, ask you that? It's definitely, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely tempting to go again. I, I just think uh, 
it's such a huge time commitment. I, I also feel like I've kind of stepped away from Survivor where I feel like I did everything I wanted to do outside of maybe playing American Survivor, which that's a whole nother conversation. But it's not that I, it's not that I wouldn't. I just don't think, you know, if they want me to play again, I need a pretty good paycheck. Because I do. <laughs> it's, uh, there's a lot on the line. Yeah, there's, there's so many moving parts. So for me to step away from work again, it's like, yeah. At least the American one's only like 25 days now. So, I mean, yeah, you know, America's that's 25 yeah, days. That's that's easy, right? Not at least 50 days. Come <laughs> yeah, on, right? Cake you know, do that on the weekend. I think, <laughs> I, think, I think the length of game is the beauty of, like, that's why I love Australian Survivor. I, I like Australian Survivor better than American Survivor. No offense to my American friends. I, I love that game, but. It's, um, I just think that length of time just takes a real craft to be able to navigate such a long, long time. And it also gives you time to work plans and do things like getting things together in like a day, two days can be really hard sometimes. But when you've got like your overall arching plan and it's working out, I just, yeah, it's special. Yeah. It's such an honor to be able to induct you here today, David, and to, and to learn more about these stories and everything along those lines. In your original season, <laughs> I have to say, you, you're joining Luke and Pia as uh, Hall of Fame inductees. So a lot of people coming from your original season. So obviously, uh, pretty well, good they, cast. I mean, they're too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they they deserve to be in there in spades. They're just both such fantastic people and players. So I love both their games and learn a lot from both of those guys, you know? Yeah, indeed, so. indeed. Well, we've got a couple of goodies that we'll uh, ship out to you to celebrate uh, oh, your, yeah. your awards. It's always good <laughs> to be able to get some stuff for something like this. But uh, on behalf of myself, the expert panel and all the fans who voted for you, David, it's an absolute honour to induct you into the Hall of Fame. Congratulations, mate. Thank you so much for your time and uh, uh, all the best. And we hope to see you on Survivor again maybe one day in the future. Man, thank you so much, Ben. It would be, uh, yeah, it's a real honour and, and much appreciated. And you never know, you know, the golden dog. I think that.